This is 2OF Entertainment. Hi, it's Kiffin Levates here and Alexander Weinman asked me a question. Um, are there ways to make money or to make passive income off your crypto assets? So the answer to that in short is, well, yes, there are. The uh, easiest way, the one that everybody knows about is called holding or hodling in crypto speak. And the idea is that you have some crypto assets such as Bitcoin and you hold on to it. And over time, its price goes up as more and more people want to own some and the fact that there is only a limited supply means that market forces drive the price up. Um, so that's the simplest and easiest way to make passive income off uh, cryptocurrencies. The uh, analogy in the non-crypto world would be buying stocks in a company that is then successful and sees its stock price rise and therefore your portfolio having more value. Um, now, in the real world, um, that's what I'm going to describe the world that's not the crypto world, um, there are ways to make money off the fact that you have a lot of money. Um, one is investing, as I just described, but there are other things that you can do. For example, if you have a lot of money, you can lend it out and charge interest to people who borrow from you. And the fact is that exactly the same service is available in the crypto world. There are lending and borrowing protocols on the Ethereum blockchain, for example, uh, Arva and Compound are two that I can think of off the top of my head, where you lock up your cryptocurrency in the protocol and it's then lent out to other people who want to borrow it for whatever reason and they eventually pay it back. But in the meantime, they have to pay interest and so your overall holdings go up. So a clear analogy in the DeFi world that you see in the uh, real world. Um, Another way that you can make passive income off a hoard of cryptocurrency, if you have it, is staking. This is where you lock up your um, cryptocurrency uh, in the hopes that in the future you will get more back than you put in. And there are a number of projects out there where you can do just that. Uh, the most obvious one is to stake Ether in the Ether version 2 um, ecosystem. Uh, if you lock up your Ether like that, then you can't get your hands back on it until Ethereum 2 launches. So it's a bit of a risk because uh, Ethereum 2 has been in the works for years and I'm not seeing any sign that it is accelerating in development and deployment. However, I assume, given the amount of brain power and money that's being put into it, that it will eventually launch. And if it does, then your Ether 2 uh, that you got by locking up your Ether uh, should appreciate at a rate of about 6% a year. So that is kind of analogous to putting your money in a savings account, um, but you're having to lock it up for an indefinite period of time. Whereas normally if you uh, lock up your money in that kind of investment in the real world, um, you know exactly when you're going to be able to get your hands on it again. So that's another example. Um, trying to think off the top of my head what other ways there are to take crypto and turn it into uh, more crypto without actually doing anything. Oh yes, uh, liquidity providers. So there's a third one. Uh, decentralized exchanges need to have a reservoir of the two tokens that you exchange from one to the other. Um, this is called a liquidity pool. So for example, if you have a decentralized exchange that allows you to swap uh, Ether for DAI, then that decentralized exchange needs to have good hefty supplies of both so that when people engage in trades you don't have too much of what is called slippage. If you only had a little bit of Ether and a little bit of DAI in the DEX then exchanging one for the other would cause the exchange rate between the two in the decentralized exchange to move dramatically. And the way you avoid that is by ensuring that the liquidity pool, the amount of cryptocurrency backing the exchange, is significantly higher than the usual trade amounts. And uh, in order to encourage investors to put their cryptocurrency into the decentralized exchange to provide that mechanism, there is uh, an incentive, which is that 
there's a fee charged to people who are using the exchange and some of that fee goes to the liquidity providers. Now there are other complexities behind this, uh, something that's called impermanent loss, which is a very bad name for it. But anyway, as the price shifts, people who put money in there uh, into the liquidity pool uh, make losses, it's guaranteed. As the price shifts, the hope is that the amount you get from the uh, trade fees uh, as your cut for providing the investment in the first place will counteract and actually um, be more than the um, impermanent loss amounts that will occur. But that is another mechanism whereby you can take uh, cryptocurrency and multiply the amount you have over time, which is a form of passive income. So uh, there's just three ways that you can increase your cryptocurrency holdings um, without doing anything. Uh, provided you have a significant amount. Actually, you don't even need to have a significant amount. You can put small amounts into liquidity pools or stake them or things like that. Um, it's just that there comes a point where the gas fees will actually eat up any profits that you will make. Um, but I hope that answers your uh, question, Alexander, and I hope the rest of you found that interesting, and I'll see you all in the next video soon. Bye for now.